I'm Mr. Hyland, and today we're talking about tripods. Why tripods, you ask? Well, in the past, um, we've had some issues with tripods. Let me show you a couple examples. Number one, the head is broken. No camera can be attached. Number two, the bottom is broken. It's now fixed with duct tape. Another issue that we have with people not being careful is here's one part. Here's the rest of it. So one of the legs has actually been broken off the tripod, which actually ends up costing us a lot of money. Today we're gonna to go over the proper use of a tripod to help make sure that things like this don't happen and that you use them in the right way and in a way that's gonna make your film look great. So first of all, we have two different types of tripods that we use at Bishop Lloyd. First one, the black Valbon C400. You can see it like this. To open it, you just slide out the bottom, pretty easy from there. Then the next part, you see there are little tabs on the bottom. In order to get them to open, you just flip them up, flip them up. Then you can pull out the tripod leg as long as you want and lock them back down. Again, being careful when you lock them back down, just close them till they're tight. Once you go through and do that with all three legs, now you have a full tripod that's gonna hold your camera up. Why do they call it a tripod? Bonus points? Because it has three legs. Now that we've got a tripod set up, a few things to go over in the close-up. You'll notice there are many dials and knobs on these tripods. The first one, you notice you can't turn it, you can't pan it. If you loosen this knob on the side, it allows you to pan your tripod back and forth. I just loosened it a little bit, so it's still kind of tight. If you loosen it a lot more, then you can get a little bit more movement in. Number two, the tilt. You'll notice that there is an arm. Some tripods, you turn the arm to do it on these black valve ones, you do not. There is a knob right here. You loosen it, you can t tilt as much as you like, up and down. Lastly, but actually the first thing, in order to get the camera on and off of the tripod, you're gonna need to release the shoe, which is what we call this little piece on the top. Little release valve right here. It stays, you just slide it right out. If you notice on the top, there's a little clicker right there that when you put it back on, you just need to slide the tripod shoe in, push down, and it'll lock back into place. Now, it's not gonna come up. So now we know that we need a shoe and we need to put it on the tripod to get it to work. Now, we need to figure out how to get the camera and the shoe together. If you look at the bottom of the camera, there is uh, one hole that's just open and one hole that has threads. If you look on the bottom of especially this black Velbin tripod, there is one that's just open and you can push on it and the other one that has threads. Find the thread and the thread, put them together and on the bottom there's a little bit of screw and you just screw it right in until it's finger tight. You don't need to crank on it because that hurts it. Just finger tight and then you're good. Double check, make sure it's not too loose. Then you're gonna back up, you're gonna take your tripod. Same thing as before. You want to put it in sideways and then click down and then make sure you lock that back into place and your camera should not move. Now a note on once you have the camera on the tripod. Many people, sometimes they just grab the tripod and run around with the camera. When time you're moving with the tripod, you should always make sure you're holding on to the camera as well as the tripod. You might not want to take it off all the time when you're moving from one place over to the next, but you should always hold on to the camera, hold on to the tripod, never just hold on to the tripod, and definitely never lift up the tripod just by the camera. One last knob that's on the tripod is this little switch right here. So sometimes you notice that you just need a little bit more height. So in order for that to happen, this little dial on one side you can open up, and the other side there's a crank, and you can crank the camera up. Once you got it done, Unless, if you don't lock this, the camera's probably gonna lock right down, fall right down. So open it all the way up, go to the other side, lock it in, and you should be good to go. When you finish off with the camera, you finish off with your filming, you're gonna take the camera off, and we need to always take the shoe off because you might use one kind of tripod and another person might use a different kind of tripod, and the shoe doesn't stay with the camera, the shoe stays with the tripod. So lock it back in, put it away. Then, when you're done, we want to pull it up, we're going to open up the legs, just like this, slide them back in and lock them back down. You're going to go through for each leg, make sure you close them up, tidy it up before you hand it in. The last thing is that you notice that this 
is kind of sticking out. So you're going to loosen the top and rotate it around a little bit to find a good spot. Slide it in so it's nice and tucked in, everything's away, and then lock all of the whole, all of the different valves back down. It's nice, it's compact, it's taken care of. There's uh, one other kind of tripod that we're going to be using in class, and it is called the Valbon, again, the Sherpa 200R. This one's a little bit different. It's a little bit more robust. It's made out of steel, not much plastic, so hopefully it'll take a little bit more. Um, same kind of thing. You'll notice there's the releases on the bottom to extend the legs. The shoe on this is very similar. Same thing. Loosen up the top, and it will slide right out when you're done. Slide it back in, press down, it'll click and then just lock it back in. This one you'll notice only has the threaded one, so you'll just have to be careful when you put the camera on that you're actually threading into the threaded spot on the camera. A few other differences on this tripod. On the top, there's a little button right here, or a little knob that you can turn it and you can actually tilt the camera up and down. There's absolutely no reason for you to ever have a camera tilted on its side like that because we know that we can't take vertical footage and flip it down. So you might use it if you're using a photographic camera where you're shooting some sideways and then you're gonna flip it to portrait style instead. Um, or if you just can't get the tripod steady and you need to just make some minor adjustments to make sure that you have a straight line of the horizon line, you could do that. Um, on the other side, in order to make this camera tilt or pan, both of them, you need to turn the handle. You notice when I turn the handle, I can move it. When I lock the handle, I have no movement. So righty tighty, lefty loosey, turn to the left, you get a little bit of movement. The other thing to be careful about when you're using these particular tripods is that the head for these tripods can actually come off. So if this is locked down, you can actually loosen it enough that the whole tripod head would come off. So if you were working on something in particular and you need a different kind of tripod head, or if you upgraded this tripod to use a different style of head, then you could actually take this all the way off and replace it with a different head, which is a bonus sometimes, but when you're filming, if your camera's on top of the tripod and you spin it one too many times and the head comes off, definitely not a good thing. So always want to make sure that you're really careful and that the head is always tightened all the way on. As soon as you get it, it should be all tightened, so just double check as soon as you get a tripod, give it a turn, make sure it's all tight. Then if you want to do any pans, remember, loosen, and then you're all good. Tighten when you're done, okay? The last thing you might want to do is put it up or down. So there's this little knob right here, again, where if you loosen it, you can move it up or down. Again, when you're finished, just like the other one, make sure all of the legs are in and then you loosen off the arm put it down tuck it away and tighten it up make sure all the little knobs are tightened make sure the shoe is off the camera and on top of the tripod and you should be good to go if you're carrying the tripod around which we all have to do um, make sure that you're holding it by the actual legs you can put it over your shoulder you can hold it I don't know, you can cradle it, you can do whatever you want to do. Make sure you're not just holding it by the arm. When you're holding on the arm, you're putting a huge amount, all of the weight is on the bottom of the tripod, and it's all going on these few little joints. So, uh, when you're carrying it, make sure you tuck the arm in, lock it down, and then hold it by the legs, and that will help make sure that you're not putting undue stress on the tripod, and helping it last for a lot more people to use. As a general rule, if something doesn't move easily, you're doing it wrong or it's not supposed to move at all. So if you have to crank on something, be careful, it's probably not the best way or that piece doesn't move. Loosen off, you can move a little bit more. With the leg, open it and it should slide out easily. Treat it with respect, be very careful with it and the tripod will hugely impact the production value of your films. If you have any questions, let me know.